Okay, hello and welcome to or back to my channel if you have been here before. I'm wearing a little bit of different ears right now than anything. I only own, um, except for one DIY pair of ears, I only own actual Disney Parks ears. So, in this time of quarantine, I thought that it's a perfect time to make ears, so I ordered up some materials and I figured out how to make them myself. So I made these guys, which have little sloths on them. If you don't know me, I love sloths, love them. I have one tattoo and it is a sloth tattoo. So yeah, I have also made a couple more ears. So in this video, you guys are gonna see how I turned a pair of Epcot ears into a pair of Canada ears, because. Disney's really lacking in the Canada merch, and they made those Epcot ears with different countries. And I thought that I should take it upon myself to make those into Canada ones. So I did that, and then I also showed you how to make just a regular pair of Canada ears. So I hope you guys enjoy. So for the materials, I bought a pair of Spaceship Earth UK ears from the outlets when I was in Florida. So obviously not everyone will have those, but you can definitely use any pair of Mickey ears that you've made yourself and still design this bow. Then I bought bandanas from Michaels that I did use 40% off coupons on, as well as some make belief pins. And then I just have sewing supplies, pins, and things like that that I will need for the actual DIY. Everything that I have purchased, I'll try to find an alternative to and list down below for you guys. So getting into actually making the ears, the first thing I did was cut off the tags and then figure out how to cut off the bow in a way that would still work. Thankfully, the bows aren't sewn on all that well, so it was really easy just to use a seam ripper and cut in a way that did not affect the actual integrity of the head bend at all and cut one piece of string and then rip it off. Then I deconstructed the actual bow by just cutting off that center bit and it just came apart right away. It was pretty awesome. And then I had a sheet that I could use later. Since the Union Jack bow was already the perfect size, I used it as the base for the creation of my bow. So I took my measuring tape and I measured it lengthwise and widthwise and then made marks onto my red fabric or bandana adding about a centimeter or a half on each side just for sewing room and then I made those marks and cut out a piece. So it was time to sew my rectangle into the actual bow but I started by hand sewing and later did do the rest with my sewing machine just because it was going to take way too long and I wanted the seams to be seamless but this is more for show for you guys so I guess I'm kind of calling myself out showing my hand sewing start but yeah. You just sew it up, make sure that you leave a small hole so you can turn it inside out. When it's all sewn up, you can use that hole that you did create to turn it inside out. I did use a pen uh, to help me like fluff it out, make sure all the corners are crisp and that everything looked good and then it was ready for the next step. So since on this channel we do believe in reducing, reusing and recycling, I did cut out the insides of the Union Jack bow, sorry to anybody who is from England, if I am disrespecting you guys at all, I am so sorry. But yeah, I just reused the inside so that I wouldn't have to use new stuff and just throw this out. If you don't have this, obviously, most of you won't. Uh, you can just use stuffing or I suggest quilting batting, works really, really well. That's essentially what they used and I was just repurposing it. Once I had the old fabric all cut off and done, I was able to stuff it really easily into the bow pouch that I had created and then it was time to sew up just a little side bit. So then I sewed the little pocket shed just using a basic stitch going back and forth from either side before tying it off and getting ready for the next step. This step is definitely optional but just because batting can be pretty puffy especially since it was reused and manipulated I'm just going to sew down the middle of my bow to keep it down and flat in that area. It also is gonna make it easier when we cinch it. Now it's time to turn our little pillow into a bow shape. So I just kind of pinched it together and it automatically kind of laid how I wanted it, which is pretty awesome. So I just put a stitch all the way through the middle and then wrapped around the center a couple of times before knotting off my stitch and keeping it all together and bundled. So to create the center of the bow, I took my white bandana slash fabric and I cut out a strip, keeping it pretty wide because I want to be able to fold it pretty well. 
using my nails what is nice about the bandana fabric is that you can fold it without having to iron it so I just use my nail to fold it down and create the center of the bow once I had a shape and width that I was happy with I did sew the bottom to the bottom of my bow this is just going to make sure that's super secure for the actual headband and then I bought these enamel pins off Amazon that are little maple leaves so I thought it was the perfect center for the bow I got it out of its bag and I used a, a little bit of E6000 on the actual pin just to ensure that it's not going to fall off because if you're a Disney fan you know that it will fall off. I first made a hole and then put that E6000 and actually secured the pin onto the bow and made sure that it was looking good, looking nice and we were all good to go and we had a little Canadian flag. To finish off the bow I just cut off any excess fabric, fold it over a little bit and then I stitched up the bottom to keep it all together and Get ready to attach it to the actual headband. After re-threading my needle, it was time to put that guy onto the actual headband. So I placed it where I wanted to go, marked some spots just to make sure that it was going exactly where I wanted it, and then I grabbed my needle and just did a knot stitch by pulling the needle through, and then at the end of the thread before the knot I did go through that hole. This is just going to create a knot and make sure that's secure and I just then attached the bow and I sewed around the front and then I'm going to go around and sew around the entire back as well. If you want it to be super secure you can do it a second time just to make sure that the bow doesn't move but I found that since I've been sewing for so many years just one loop around was pretty good because I did do very small stitches. And after not ironing off the thread, there it was, we had a pair of Canadian maple leaf ears. Don't they look good? For this pair of ears, you're going to need some special supplies. So the first is headbands. I will leave a link down below, like with the last one of everything that I use that I can find. But I just got these craft headbands and then I made some stencils. I will leave a couple links to ones that I found online. There's loads online. Just for the ears, you're going to need one circular one and then one with an arch at the bottom. And then also you are going to need a hot glue gun, a sewing machine preferably, but you can hand sew all this or use the hot glue gun. Some trim for the inside of the headband and then whatever fabric and ribbon that you want to use for the project. The first thing I did was make my stencils. So for my two circles, I used a circle a stencil and then I made a 11 centimeter diameter circle and a 10 centimeter diameter circle where I just cut an arch using a pair of regular Mickey ears that I have. Again, you can probably find um, some stencils online and I will link some down below. And then for my headband stencil, I just used a piece of paper and then traced half of my headband just kind of twirling it as I went and then put an extra centimeter around. I would even maybe go down to half a centimeter around. You don't need that much fabric, but yeah. And then I cut out the stencil, my headband stencil, getting ready to cover my headband. So once I had my headband stencil, I just drew it onto my fabric and then cut that out. Opening up what I cut out, I just laid it out. Made sure that it was all good. It's kind of wonky. That is my mistake. And then I grabbed my headband and I used my hot glue gun actually to put small little dollops onto the headband. And then I just rolled it on. This is going to keep the fabric in place while I try to actually attach the underneath area. And then I actually began wrapping the headband. So I started by putting a little bit of hot glue at the tips, folding those over just so that they have a nice clean edge. And then I went around and I slowly folded down the fabric on the outside, bringing it in, trying to be as clean as possible and hot gluing the edges down. And just like magic, now it is completely covered. Look at that. Wow. And then I took some medium rickrack, which I got from Walmart, or you could use a Chinese braided ribbon, which would work just as fine. And I just kind of folded over the edge with my hot glue, making sure that it's a clean edge. And then I wrapped the entire inside of my headband, going slowly and gluing as I went. And now with the Magic Production that is also covered, I did fold the other edge when I cut it and made sure that was a clean edge as well. Now taking my fabric of choice, which is this awesome maple leaf fabric that I found at Walmart, I am going to get started and make the actual ears. Make sure that you fold over the fabric that you're going to be using so that it is good side to good side. This is just going to make the whole process easier. And then you're going to grab your stencil. I'm using an 11 centimeter diameter circle and I'm going to draw that on to my actual fabric. Can't really see it. This was a flop for me, but I just drew it on and then I used pins to pin together the fabric. 
when I sew, I know that I'm going to sew on the actual black line where I drew my lines. Uh, if you are going to use that as the guide for your actual sewing machine edge, I suggest using a 12 centimeter diameter circle. Something I didn't show is that I did use my 10 centimeter diameter circle with the arc at the bottom to just make the lines that I want um, for the actual arc and where I want to start and stop my hole for the ears. And then I sewed around again using the black line as my stitch line and I stitched that all up. If you do not have a sewing machine, you can always use liquid stitch or hand stitch this part. Um, there are plenty of tutorials online that show you how to make a no sew pair of Mickey ears. So you can always go look at that and come back to see how I did the bow. So when I was done sewing, I used some fabric scissors just to cut off all the excess since I did use my line as my guide. So I had a ton of excess fabric. And then we were ready to take out the pins and turn the ears inside out. I don't know why, but turning your ears inside out and seeing how they actually come to form is one of my favorite things ever. So I left this clip in just so you could see it all and how it comes together. Oh my goodness, now there's two of them. I wanted to make sure that my ears were really stable, so I bought Craft Foam on Amazon, which I will link down below. It's the perfect size for your inside of your ears, and then I used my 10 centimeter diameter circle with the arc at the bottom to make my stencil and then I cut out two pieces of that. Honestly this step is completely optional. You don't have to put in the foam but with all my research everyone uses cardboard and I saw one girl use foam and I thought it was a good idea. I didn't use as thick of foam as her but it still worked and I think that even if you didn't have it, if you just stuffed them, they would be perfectly fine. I just suggest not using cardboard because if it got wet, so if you ever went on Splash Mountain or you got caught in those nice Florida rainstorms, they will get kind of ruined and after you put in so much work in them, you don't want that to happen. So definitely use foam if you are going to do this step. To put them into my empty ears, I just turned them into little tacos and I slipped them in there and just adjusted the fabric around the foam until it was perfect and I had the arc matching up with the one that is at the bottom of the ear. Now it's time to stuff the ears. The key to this is really to make sure that there's an even amount of stuffing on either side of the foam or if you don't have foam, just any even amount all around. And then you want to make sure that if there is no lumps and bumps, honestly, more is better in this situation. Some people try to put less to think that it's going to make it less full and stuff, but the more you put, the more compact it's going to be and the better it's going to be. You can use a pen to adjust things if needed. I sewed up the bottom, but you could definitely glue it. But what you're going to do is lay one side flat, kind of tucking it under the other, and then you're going to fold one over and tuck it again. It's going to naturally follow the arc of your foam which is a definite plus of using the foam. And then you're gonna to wanna to use a whip stitch to stitch the entire thing closed. And be sure to stuff and sew the bottom of your second pair of ears as well. Now it is a time to actually attach those ears to our headband. So I'm gonna use the same technique as Zippity Emily on YouTube. I will link her channel down below. She's much better at making ears than I am. But I'm gonna measure out my entire headband and then I'm gonna make a mark halfway down, which is gonna be for our bow. And then for the actual ears, the measurement that she gives is four centimeters from that bow mark. I honestly use the same exact one for measuring from an actual Disney headband. It's about four centimeters from the center or about from the edge of the bow. It's about two and a half. So that would equal out to about four and a half if you wanted to be really precise. But four is nice and even, which is really easy to do. Now to actually attach the ear, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to put it right on that mark that I made for the ear. It's just going to be the top of the ear. I'm going to put it through, pull the string almost all the way through, and then put my needle through between the knot and the actual thread. This is going to make a knot stitch and it's going to keep us really secured. It's the same thing we did for that first pair of ears to put on the bow. And then I'm going to stitch around the bottom of the ear going two times to keep it secure. Be very careful with this. And if all goes well, then you have two ears on top of the headband. It is time to break out that ribbon that you chose. I've chose a big white one and then these white with maple leaves. Using the bigger ribbon that I got here, this one's about two inches wide. I'm going to just measure out how much I want and how big I want that bow to be. I use the actual headband to gauge this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that piece and I'm gonna cut another piece the exact same size just because I want to have a pretty dimensional bow and I really like this 
double leafed look. So then I'm going to fold both sides of the ribbon onto the center, making sure that I have the good side out. And I'm going to use hot glue just down that center to glue down both pieces. Then I just accordion folded my ribbon. I'm going to put a little dollop of glue between each one of the bits of the bow. This is going to keep it together. While I was doing this, this really brought me back to about 2015 when Tumblr was full of girls wearing bows and I made a whole bunch of homemade ones. So yeah. Follow the same steps to make a second bow and then you're just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom and glue those two suckas together. Using my smaller ribbon, I am going to make a little loop using my bow to just adjust how big I want it and then I'm going to cut out that piece and cut out three other ones making four of the same strip all together. So once I have all four strips, I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue onto the end and fold it over to make this little loop guy. And with more TV magic, we have all four done. So we're going to use the hot glue just to position those onto the front using a little bit of hot glue and glue them on in like this flare out pattern that looks really pretty, I think. Using another piece of ribbon, I am going to fold it up a couple of times to make the inside of the bow and I'm just going to hot glue that to the bottom, loop it around fold it over and then fully attach it to the bow making sure that we have a clean and nice edge. And for our last step we're going to secure the actual bow onto the headband. So I found the side that it's going to work best on and then I used hot glue to attach it right onto the mark we made for the center at the very start of the full putting together process. And ta-da! We are all done. It's Okay, so I'm just editing this video and I just wanted to stop in and say thank you for watching. Um, I'm really happy with how these guys turned out and I've been making tons more ears. So you might see more ear videos in the future. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.